Hello, child of God. As you well know, you do not need or have to have a greenhouse in order to talk to God. He's waiting for us anywhere at any time. But Almighty God established a pattern back when he created the Garden of Eden. Each evening, he would visit Adam and Eve in the garden. This is where Adam was to learn about God and gardening. There are many different kinds of prayer and many different ways to hear from God. What Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and will not follow the voice of a stranger. There's certainly a time to talk to Almighty God, but it's just as important for us to know when to stop and listen to God. I learned to talk in my early childhood, as most did. But as an adult, I must discipline myself to listen. I hear God speaking to me in my spirit in a wee small voice. But usually my mind is so busy thinking that my spirit does not really listen as I should. The point that I'm making is Almighty God is aggressively seeking a conversation with us. But we usually just are not listening and probably not as interested in what God has to say because we're doing all this multitasking inside of our minds. Even in the time of Moses, the children of Israel did not want to hear from God themselves. They forced that job on Moses. And except for a few minor exceptions, mankind has been determined to let someone else talk to God for them and just be told what God says. Recently, a friend of mine asked me a question during a much longer conversation. Can you please inform me by the Holy Spirit? What does the Lord want me to do specifically? Well, my friend just asked an honest question, but he was ignorant to the dangers of both the question and the answer. And without hesitation, the Holy Spirit gave me the words to answer. Yes, I can inform you by the Holy Spirit what the Lord wants you to do specifically. Stop asking anyone else on this planet to hear from God for you. Seek God yourself. No shortcuts. Almighty God wants a personal relationship with you. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they will not follow the voice of a stranger. Then under the anointing, I explained it to him. Yes, I hear from God. I know his voice. Sometimes I speak for God. But there is no man on earth or gift of the Holy Spirit that is a substitute for God. Obviously, this was not the answer he was expecting or the answer that he wanted to hear. So he asked me a follow-up question. Okay, so is that really what the Lord has spoken to you for me? Again, under the anointing I explained, there are many gifts of the Holy Spirit, word of knowledge, prophecy, and so on. But there is only one person between God and man. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, the conversation went on for a while, but I shared with you the highlights of the conversation. Later, I was thinking about what the Holy Spirit said and began receiving instructions from him on how dangerous my friend's thinking was to him. Take, for example, all the precious children of God that expected the Roman Catholic popes to hear from God for them. I love my Catholic brethren, but history of the church shows the corruption and mass murders ordered by the various popes. My Mormon brethren followed the con man Joseph Smith as he translated the golden tablets into a new gospel, the Book of Mormon. And C.T. Russell, whom founded the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, whom was often called God's mouthpiece. Come on now, God's mouthpiece. As he interpreted his Bible of stone, he interpreted the pyramids of Giza, his Bible of stone. Then after C.T. Russell died of a heart attack, his lawyer, Rutherford hijacked this multi-million dollar magazine empire and turned it into the cult group, the Jehovah's Witnesses, with him being the emperor of that empire. The JWs have followed men to the point that they had to write a new Bible to hide and cover up the corruptions of the teachings of man that the Jehovah Witnesses believe. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the people whom are Catholics, the JWs and the Mormons, but I have no respect for their religion. The Lord Jesus Christ specifically mentioned that the blind will follow the blind until they all fall in the ditch. Now, I'm not qualified to bash anybody's relationship with Almighty God. I'm just saying, do not trust anyone to be a substitute for talking to God yourself and hearing from Him yourself. 
Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. Child of God, I love to work in my garden, and especially in the greenhouse. But spending time there with Almighty God, and learning to learn from Him, has made it an amazing spiritual experience. Jesus said, My sheep know my voice, and will not follow the voice of a stranger. Almighty God is the one that chose the environment of the garden for fellowship, and speaking from my own experience, it is a low-stress environment where I am spiritually happy and relaxed, and for me, it is an excellent environment to hear the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you have any gardening questions, talk to the Lord first, and listen for yourself to what He says. And I'll see you on the next video. May God bless you. Bye-bye.